Good evening and welcome to Alameda Currents, TV and webcast for Alameda, produced by Alamedans. I'm Jeff Canberra, your host for this week's show. And Alameda has one of the highest percentages of historical residents in the Bay Area. There are hundreds of historically significant homes on the island. Architectural styles include the Grand Victorians and Queen Anne's of the 1880s, to the turn of the century Italianates, and later craftsman style homes. Right. Houses like this one were built when foundations were made of brick. But brick foundations have a number of inherent problems. First, there's no way to secure the house to the bricks. Early houses were simply placed on top of the bricks and relied on the weight of the house to keep the house from moving. During a strong earthquake, the house could actually be shaken off of the brick foundation. Second, the individual bricks were cemented together with something called mortar. It's this gray material in between the bricks. Over time, mortar breaks down and loses its ability to bind the bricks into a single unit. Later on in the show, we'll see what happens when mortar gets old. Today, we'll be talking to Tom Carroll, a local foundation contractor, to learn more about brick foundations and something called shear wall. But first, I want to take a moment to explain some of the terms Tom will be using so we can all follow along. Let's head over to the slate. This is a diagram of a typical Alameda house on a brick foundation. So here's your trench. This is the soil that's around your house. And the bricks have been set into this trench. The mortar connecting the bricks together is all in here. On top of this unit, they put the mud cell. That's that piece of wood that rests on the cap of the brick foundation. And the mud sill is used to attach these cripple studs to the secure foundation. We have a better example here. Okay, so here's your brick foundation in the trench. Here's your mud sill here. And then these short studs that connect the mud sill to your first floor are called cripple studs. They create the crawl space underneath your house. So let's go join Tom out at the job site and we'll learn more about brick foundations. You ready? Let's go. Very cold, very damp. Typical crawl space, I should say. Um, typical brick foundation. Old, weathered, dilapidated. Definitely time for replacement. In California, where we have earth movement, this will just shake apart. It has you can't you can't bolt the foundation. You can't do a you can't bolt the mud sill, you can't do any type of shear wall because it'll just come right apart. So it absolutely needs to be replaced. You have water damage. I mean, just complete and total failure. That's exactly what that is. It can't be fixed. Only replacement can fix that. There's no other type of technique to, to solve this problem except for a complete replacement. And you would want to fix it by resetting the bricks? That's putting a band-aid on a broken leg. Very bad. Note the, uh, to very typical in old homes. You can note the, the spacing between the, the cripples, but we'll come back to that later. If you recall from the drawing, the mud sill is that piece of wood that sits directly on the bricks and is used to nail the upright cripples to. The entire weight of the house rests on the mud sill, and it's that place where water can collect if there's a hole in the exterior siding. You can't tell by looking at this, by the top of it, but I can guarantee if we were to take this mud sill off and you turned it over, it would just be rotted out from underneath. They got termites. Rock and roar. Yeah, 
mud shell. Turn it over. Nice and rotten. Wow. Wow. Not the most ideal situation for a 50 ton house. Probably shouldn't be able to do that, huh? Once the mud sill is off, the next step is to remove all those bricks that were mortared together over a hundred years ago. Under normal conditions, you'd need a jackhammer to break up the mass. Let's go back to Tom and watch him demonstrate his superhuman strength. So here you have a typical foundation wall. You see it's not doesn't go very deep. There's a footing, one brick, two brick, three brick, four brick, five brick high. Not very good. An earthquake situation comes apart pretty easily. We need to do that. Yeah, this one's really nice. Okay, here we have a side view of a foundation. Here's your footing, here's your wall, and just like the adjoining wall, we've taken off the mud sill so that you can see how easily it comes apart. So, there you go. So this is your foundation. This is what your house is sitting on. As you can see, now although my strength has been compared to an earthquake, it's not likely I could do, I should, it's not likely I should be able to do this. Tom and his crew have a big job ahead of them in removing all of the mud cell and thousands of brick. Once the site is cleared of the old brick, Tom's crew will dig the trench and build the forms to hold the concrete that will form the new foundation the house will rest on. Once the forms are built and inspected, the fun begins when the cement truck and pumpers show up. Pop a little mud. Once the concrete is poured and allowed to set up, the forms are pulled out and the cement is allowed to cure for a day or two. Earlier in the program, Tom talked about the spacing between the cripple studs. In this next scene, he'll talk about the importance of adding additional cripple studs. Um, here we've taken the original six, 32 inches on center and upgraded it to 16. Allows for a much stiffer lateral load, much stronger, much sturdier. Less movement on the house, much more strength. Smaller spacing allows for more nails on a shear, which we'll get to in just a few seconds. Just all around better building. Tom has mentioned shear wall several times through the course of the program. I asked him if he would give us a demonstration of what shear wall actually is. All right, now I personally feel that a shear wall is just as important as a foundation. The two go hand in hand. To prove just how, the, how a shear wall works and how important it can be, I've constructed this little model to give it ex uh, as an experiment. This represents a frame wall of your house, so your house might be setting on. This would be without a shear wall. So if an earthquake comes, it's a bit of an oversimplification, but I think uh, the message is made clear. So. Pretty simple. Simple human strength was able to do that. Same wall, built the same. This, this framing would be represented on your house here, here. And you add a shear wall to it, and then you try to do the same thing. And you just can't. It's just silly to try. So there it is, a shear wall. 
Okay, so shear wall is those cripple studs covered with a piece of plywood. But why is that important? Okay, well here we have what I consider to be one of the most important aspects of the whole process, the shear wall. This is the final connection of the first floor to the foundation, which in an earthquake is pretty much everything. Makes your house move in a controlled way, as a, like a box, like a big strong cube moving all at once. Um, here's your new mud sill connected to your foundation. 16 on center cripples. Plywood shear wall. Now this is, there's a couple ways to attach the shear wall to the first floor. A lot of people use a simple Simpson strap or a, um, and you just put it on the plywood and the floor joint <coughs> and attaches it. I personally prefer to notch my plywood between every floor joist. That way it gives it, that's about as strong as you can get. So now we have the first floor attached to the foundation and that's pretty much your best defense against an earthquake. Imagine the earth comes rolling through here. House is going to want to be thrown off its foundation, but the plywood is going to hold the, the first floor to the foundation. It's going to move as one. It's going to stand. So that's it for this week's show. I'd like to thank my friend Tom Carroll for providing us all that great information on brick foundations and shear wall. So for those of you that have a house on a brick foundation, you might want to think about giving Tom a call, preferably before the next earthquake. So until next week, this is Jeff Canberra saying, enjoy. Now get out of that bed, head wash your face and hands.